Hey there, it's Ashley with Createful Art. Today we're going to be creating a watercolor fall birch tree painting. Thanks to Cindy, one of Createful Art's patrons, for requesting this lesson and painting. You too can get a lesson and a painting by becoming a patron, and it helps me keep these lessons coming. So Cindy is a beginning artist, so we're going to make this really simple. We're going to start with some supplies. For supplies, you're gonna need some watercolor paper. I like to use Strathmore, and it's the cold press, 140 pounds, and I'm using a nine by 12 inch. You'll also need a jar with water in it, paper towel, a few brushes. Notice that these are small brushes, and they're not expensive brushes, and watercolor paints. If you're not confident in your drawing abilities, you're gonna need a thin willow charcoal, and then, a birch tree reference photo. So now that we have all these supplies, we can start. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the picture and print it in black and white, and then you're gonna use your willow, and you're going to outline the birch trees so that you know the basic shapes of the birch trees. If you're not confident in drawing, this will definitely shorten the lesson and make it very helpful to get the random nature of trees. So on your reference photo, just pick out the trees that you would like. Now that you have all of your trees outlined, you're just gonna turn this over and stamp it right on your watercolor paper. Press it down and go over the entire area so that it'll transfer. It's not going to pick up every single line that you make, but it's definitely going to give you an idea of where the trees are going to be, which will help you. Okay. So take your round brush, your small round brush, and you're going to grab your black, and you're just going to start maybe with the middle tree here, and follow the line that you created. So one edge of the tree is going to be darker than the other edge. So you can kind of let this give it a little more water and kind of let it turn gray here. See how just adding less pigment helps it gray? And you don't have to follow the line all the way. I'm going to take this line down even though I have all my trees right here. Okay, do the same thing here. Just follow those lines. Okay, once you have all of your trees outlined, then you just take your black and you start adding in very randomly the part of the birch trees that is dark, usually where the knots of the trees are. You can add just some lines. And the point here is the random nature of birch trees. So if you need to look at your reference photo, then do so and just kind of see how the birch tree looks. Now notice when I add more pigment, it's black. And when I have less pigment and more water, it's gray. I'm gonna want both of those colors in my birch tree. but I am not going to cover all of the white area. Spots like where branches separate, there's going to be more black there and more gray. And most of the time at the bottom of a tree, we'll have some bushes here, Oop. but at the bottom of a tree, usually there's a lot of shadow. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll make that into something. Just let your mind be free and go with the flow. Now that we have the basics done of the tree, we can start overlapping some colors. 
All right, so now we're going to add in our colors that are going to go on top of our trees. And I'm going to use some purple. And I'm just going to add some of the colors a little bit through here. I want to make sure that it's just lightly just to give it some color. Not all of the trees need it, just a couple of them. Mostly the ones that are in the foreground. Okay. Then you're going to add some blue. And I'm going to use this blue right here to add some cool color to it. And the fun thing about painting trees is you can decide whatever colors you want to use. With photographs, you kind of have to use what colors are there. But with paintings, you get to choose. So I'm going to make a greenish yellow color. And I'm going to start by putting some of that color down here behind this tree. And notice how I'm just taking this and blotting. Okay, I want to leave spaces. And I want it to be kind of random in nature. I'm kind of just using this motion right here. It's about being random. Start putting yellow and it will lighten up as it dries. And then you know how some of the bushes um, down low, they turn colors in the fall? I want that. So I'm gonna use some of this red here. It's gonna look pink against this. Lighten that color a little bit. And I'm not going to worry that there's only a little bit of red in this corner because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that red up over here. And that will give this painting some unity. So go ahead and paint in your bushes however you wish. Okay, so as you go further back, you're going to want to lighten your colors. Just add some idea of some leaves back here. And you barely have to have any pigment on your brush. You can even drag some of the pigment from the colors that are already placed down. And go ahead and add like, you know, some lines that kind of make look, look like bushes. You just drag the color around. You don't even need to add any color to your brush. Now we get to fill in our trees up here. And I'm gonna start with green. I want that same green color I had before. Okay, and the same strokes. Just kind of spread it around. Don't think about it too much. Just go with the flow and let your hand and your mind lead you. It's very relaxing if you do that and don't overthink it. Some yellow. Now I'm gonna mostly use yellow up here because that is the color of birch trees mostly. That and gold. And I'm just going to take this color way up high. And this small brush makes it so that I have variety. 
and I don't just fill it in one big huge block of yellow. It's looking pretty, isn't it? Okay, now you can add your gold in there. I'm using this kind of gold. I think it's a warmer color than that one, so that's what I'm using. Now, some of these leaves go in front of the tree. So when you go in front of the tree, just add some more pigment onto your brush and it'll cover that black. Okay, and then to go over this section, I'm just gonna scrub out a little bit of that black and then go over it dark. I need to let it dry a little bit. Come back. I'm going to add the least amount of color that I have and bounce it back. And that was with the red. So I'm going to add some red in here. I probably want it to be kind of light. See that gets you to look right there. Bring it over. So this tree will make you follow up to here, to where your eyes are gonna follow the colors. Never seen red and birch trees, but I think it's pretty. So I make it. I can make it however I want. Now this is the really fun part. I like this part a lot. Get your brush really wet and start letting it splash onto your paper by taking your finger and going like that. And then you can take it and you can whack like this. Give it some splash marks. That's really fun. Okay, so you see how there's not a lot going on right through here? That's going to change. All you are is going to just add a little bit of some trees. Use your gray and very, very lightly. Like these are way in the back, kind of like how that one looks. These are way in the back, so you just barely see them. Because most of the time, there are a lot of trees in the forest. And they just continue going back and back and back. And you don't want it to be too busy and have everything, you know, focused. You want some of it to blur out. You just draw some lines. This kind of seems like a loner tree, so add a couple of trees over here. It's one of those things that you just, you're like, oh, what does it, what does my painting seem to need, you know? Is it missing something? Do I feel like it needs something? And then you just add it. kind of going off the edge here. And then this is kind of lonely, but I don't want too much going on, so I'm just going to add the branch going behind there. Because there's this one that's coming too. Okay. Right. Pretty close to being done here. Okay, and then the next thing that you can do is take your thin brush and some black and then just add some more detail wherever you want some detail. Oh, that's, it has to be dry where you add the detail. So like right here, a couple little branches going over and this will help it look a little more realistic. See the thing is there's leaves and stuff going over some of these branches and so you won't be able to see them all. So just taking some black and going this way in that direction helps it to look more realistic. 
And then I like to come in for some last minute fun. Make some dark green. With your black and your green. Like a, since I don't have a dark green as one of my colors, I have to make it. And then I like to just Splash it in there. Just have some fun with it. Let some of this go off the page. There we go. And you can't really control it, so it lets you loosen up and let go of control, which is Something that is hard for some artists, but good for them. Okay, and then I'm gonna do some of the pink again, put some bigger blotches right up there. Yeah, bring in some of this pink. Seems to need it up through here. And then you just do some finishing touches. Take a few minutes and just kind of scrub some of those colors together. So it doesn't look so speckled. Just kind of blending them together. I like to take my small brush and sign my work. You're done here's my finished art piece I hope you had fun if you like this lesson please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of these fun lessons and to make sure that you get every lesson go to createflart.com and subscribe there too I will see you next time and thank you again Cindy for being a patron member and for sharing your love of art with me I will be sending this one to you because you want it so I will see you next time. Bye!